Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. We have a lot to talk about today. First off, the Pro Tour is coming back, and the format for the first season's regional championship tournaments is Pioneer. So there's some Pioneer cards going up in value today. Also, early streets of New Capenna, as well as Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate previews have been moving some cards. You'll see that throughout the video today. And there's still a lot of players building new Commander decks around Kamigawa and Neon Dynasty cards. So that itself is still a big influence on card prices right now. And there's a whole lot more. We're going to dig into all of it in just a second. Quickly, though, before we get started, just a fast reminder, if you go to FlipSideGaming.com, you can use the Heroes promo code to save 10% on orders over $10. Currently, you can pre-order Streets of New Capenna products there. They also have a whole lot of other stuff on their website. Remember, if your order's over $100 or consists only of singles, shipping will be free in the United States. Also, whenever you use the Heroes promo code, it does support the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you, and without any further ado, let's get into it. We're going to begin with the Standard Legal Spotlight. This is where we look at Standard cards moving the most this week, and again in today's video, we're going with a $2 threshold. We're not going to talk about any cards unless they're moving at least $2 up or down. Just a couple in this section today. This first one's pretty interesting, Fable of the Mirror Breaker. We talked about this in Wednesday's video. It's going up 388 this week to 590. And this card is really taking off considering it is a new card from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. It is seeing a lot of play and getting a lot of attention from some Magic Pros. It was the topic of the Faithless Brewing podcast this week as well, which could have helped get the word out about the card. In standard right now, this is in Rakdos Control, Teamer Midrange, and more. Pioneer, the hottest format of the week, also has this card in it. You're going to find this in Rakdos Midrange, 4 and 5 Color Fires of Invention decks, Mardu, Grease Fang, and Rakdos Aggro. I'm also starting to see some modern players trying this out in a few different builds. Some pros have been really high on the card there, others not so much. We'll have to see what happens. Also, it's getting a good amount of commander play. You'll see this many times in Ishin 2 Heavens as one, which is a popular deck right now, and other builds, of course, too. Additionally, Mark Rosewater brought some more information to the table this week regarding Streets of New Capenna. One of the things he revealed was the fact that we're going to see a red creature that can make token copies of creatures you control. Maybe that card could play very well with this one in the future, and people are already speculating on that. So that is yet another reason a whole other group of players might be interested in this card. Ultimately, this is definitely one to keep an eye on. We go from a card that's pretty new to the Market Watch to one we've talked about a number of times. This is the Meat Hook Massacre. The Innistrad double feature copy is up 424 this week to 8481. I do still think that that particular copy is inflated, though, because there's not a lot of copies out there in the online marketplace right now. So I would expect that to calm down and maybe get a little closer to the price of the other copy, and that's Innistrad Midnight Hunt. It's going up 629 to 62.87. So this is a highly played card. You're going to see this in a lot of different standard decks right now. Orzhov mid-range builds, Rakdos artifacts, and much more. Pioneer, you're going to see this there, too, and that could be the main reason it's jumping up again this week. It's in Jund and Rakdos Sacrifice there, and it has seen increased commander play too in Tatsunari Toad Rider builds. Alright, time for the Pioneer Legal Spotlight. So we have a format here that's been pretty well neglected through the pandemic, of course, because you don't have live tournaments going on. Now that the Pro Tour is coming back and the announcement was made that the regional championships in that first wave are going to be Pioneer tournaments, there's a lot of people scrambling now to pick up some cards that are good in Pioneer decks. Let's see what's happening. No cards going down to talk about today, so let's start with Blood Crypt from the list. It is up 263 this week to 1999. This was added to the list with Innistrad Crimson Vow. Stuck around, still there in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Now remember, Shocklands are all getting another reprinting in Infinity. However, right now players are scrambling to build new decks for Pioneer and they just need them. So this is not the last Shockland you're going to see in today's video. Of course, the Shocks see a lot of play in Pioneer as well as Modern and they get a ton of play in Commander builds old and new. Additionally, this is one of a number of cards that are moving this week that appeared in an Extra Turns episode of the Command Zone podcast. This one was in a Prosh Sky Raider of Kurdak. Next, we have Ren and Siri Inseparable. This is the non-foil copy going up $2.95 this week to $20.60. Currently, this is a very popular Commander, but it appears Streets of New Capenna may bring us some cards that could make this even better in the future. I did mention earlier that Mark Rosewater was teasing some information from the set. 
And one of the things he said was there's going to be a card that makes cat and dog tokens. Additionally, he said the set would contain an artifact creature treasure dog and a legendary creature cat citizen. So it does appear that we could be seeing a number of dogs and cats in the new set. On top of that, we already got a preview card that is a cat demon. Let's take a look at that. Jetmir Nexus of Rebels. Next, we have Arclight Phoenix up 298 to 998. And of course, this is in Pioneer Is It Phoenix, which has been a popular and successful deck in the format. So if I needed to throw together a deck to compete for the Pro Tour later this year, well, I might choose this one. It's also in Legacy Arclight Phoenix, and it does get a tad bit of commander play too. Here's another Shot Clan. This is Breeding Pool, the original one from Dissension. It goes up 305 this week to 3916. And this one is a Pioneer staple used in a lot of decks. It is Mana Confluence from Journey into Nyx. It goes up 312 this week to 3144. In Pioneer, you're going to see this in Naya Winota, Bant, as well as Azoria Spirits, Niv to Light, and Five Color Humans. Modern, you see this in Dredge. Legacy, it's in Lion's Eye Diamond Dredge. And this is also a card that you see quite a bit of in different Commander mana bases, including, many times, this shows up in Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow Builds. Of course, those have been popular recently because of the ninja support that came out of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. On top of that, this is in some new builds around cards from that set as well. Goshintai of Life's Origin and Hinata Dawn Crown, for example. I've also seen some people pick this up to upgrade the Buckle Up Commander deck, which has been a pretty popular product. And in other cases, I've seen people put this in fresh builds around a card from there. Shorikai Genesis Engine. Beyond all that, this also got a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week, which could have brought some more attention to it as well. And finally for this section, Winota Joiner of Forces. It goes up 1934 this week to 2890. So Naya Winota is a very popular and successful Pioneer deck currently. Makes sense that a lot of players might want to put it together now. And it's also a fairly popular commander too. It's been seeing increased play as well because of some new cards from Neon Dynasty. I've seen this in Ishin as well as Tana the Bloodsower slash Yoshimaru Ever Faithful partner commander decks. That takes us to the modern legal spotlight. This time we do have some cards going down and some cards going up in value. Again, you're going to see a lot of cards moving because of that recent banning of Lyris of the Dream Den in modern. First though, we have Kozilek Butcher of Truth from Ultimate Masters. It goes down 227 this week to 69.99. This has been on the list. It was there from Strixhaven through Modern Horizons 2. You'll find this one in Modern Colorless Tron, sometimes Eldrazi Tron. In Legacy, it's in Mono Green Cloud Post. And it has seen some increased commander play recently in Satoru Umazawa decks. Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre, is here too. This is the one from Rise of the Eldrazi. It's down 241 to 69.69. However, there is another copy going up in value. You're going to see that in just a moment. This is also getting more commander play now in those Satoru builds. Intruder Alarm, the copy from 8th edition, is down 256 this week to 2749. Now, you might remember this got hot a few weeks ago because many players were scrambling to pick it up to upgrade the Buckle Up Commander deck. Also, others were putting it in fresh builds around Shorikai from there. But now that some time has passed, we're seeing at least a little bit of a retraction here. Doubling Season. Couple copies here. The Double Masters copy is down 224 to 7840. The Battle Bond copy, which was going up quite a bit last week, goes down 337 this week to $80. So first off, huge Commander card. You're going to find this in a lot of builds, including Attracts of Praetor's Voice. Now, the reason it got hot over the last couple weeks is the fact that we saw two different cards from two different sets previewed that could play well with this. Let's take a look at those cards real quick. First, we have Minsk and Boo Timeless Heroes. That's from, of course, Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. And sure, this could play very well with Doubling Season. Perhaps there'll be other cards in the set that will do the same. Broker's Ascendancy, though, however, is particularly interesting to me. This one's from Streets of New Capenna. The Brokers are one of the crime families, so there's going to be a number of cards that are dedicated to each crime family in the main set. This one gives us the clue that perhaps the Brokers care about adding counters to things. If that's the case, Doubling Season might be a good card to have in your collection. And remember, too, it's not just about what the Brokers are doing in the main set. Each of the families is also getting a Commander deck as well. This cooling down of Doubling Season may not last that long. We'll have to see what happens. Next, we have that other copy of Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre, that I mentioned. This is the one from Ultimate Masters. It is up 307 this week to 7267. Next card moving up is Gemstone Caverns. This is the one from the list. It goes up 310 this week to 3583. So this was added to the list with Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and it is still there as we moved into Neon Dynasty. Why is this one moving? Well, it's due to the fact that this is in a number of different decks in Modern that are getting more play now ever since Lurus was banned. 
You'll see this in Crashing Footfalls, Glimpse Combo, and more. This also gets a good amount of commander play, sometimes in Yuriko. Also, it's another good upgrade to buckle up, and I have seen this in fresh builds around Shorikai. Similar story with Sea Chrome Coast from Scars of Mirrodin. This is up to 328 this week to 2499, and this is in some modern decks that are getting more play in this post Luris meta. You'll see this in Hammer Time, Thopter Combo, Azorius Spirits, Ad Nauseam. It also occasionally shows up in the mana base of various commander decks. Third verse, same as the first, another card seeing more play now that Luris is gone. This is Sword of Fire and Ice. The Modern Masters copy is up 235 to 6279. Dark Steel up 346 this week to 6715. So in Modern, you'll see this in Hammer Time, Death and Taxes, and more. Legacy, it's in Eldrazi Aggro. It also has seen some increased commander play in Ishin builds, and it is a good upgrade to that other commander deck from Kamigawa Neon Dynasty, Upgrades Unleashed. Beyond that, I've also seen this put in fresh builds around a card from there, Shishiro the Shattered Blade. Liliana of the Vale. This card was famously pushed out of modern Jund and Rakdos midrange because of Luris, and now it's making a big comeback. Modern Masters 2017 is up 349 to 7849. Innistrad is up 378 to 80 dollars. So aside from Jund and Rakdos midrange, this is also seeing play in the Rock and Eight Rack in modern, and it does get some commander play too. For example, it's in Turgrid God of Fright slash Turgrid's Lantern. And the last card in this section is the original Blood Moon from the Dark. It is up 1353 to 11890. You might remember this was going down last week. Well, it rebounds and then some this week. Now, this was added to the list with Crimson Vow. It did stick around into Kamigawa as well. And it was also recently reprinted in the Mischief Secret Lair. But there's plenty of cheap copies of Blood Moon you can grab if you want one. This is all about people that want the original copy in good condition. And those are hard to find online right now. When it comes to gameplay, of course, this sees a lot of play. In Modern, it's in Murktide Regent, Crashing Footfalls, and much more. In Legacy, it's in Blood Moon Aggro, sometimes Jeskai Control, and more there too. It also gets commander play in a number of decks, including Krenko Mob Boss. And that takes us to the Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that see play in Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or cards that are just popular among collectors. A lot of cards from the Unlimited set in today's Vintage Spotlight. You're going to see that as we go through in a second. Remember, though, in this section of the video, the card prices you see on the screen are going to be a little more reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website, and that's because most of these cards don't sell very much in any given week, so we do have to rely a little bit more on asking price than we do in other sections of the video. Remember, too, when it comes to the older, more iconic cards in this section, many times the price you see on the screen is going to be somewhere in between a high-grade raw and a high-grade graded copy of the card. That's just because that data doesn't get pulled out separately. However, if a price comes up and it's not in line with what I'm seeing when it comes to true sales, I'll let you know. Underground Sea from Revised, that is up 203 to 91438. Small, small percentage increase considering the price of this card, but I did want to point out that some of these dual lands from Revised are starting to move again. Here's another one. Tundra from Revised is up 225 to $550. Ancient Tomb, the copy from the list. It goes up 408 this week to 6569. And this was added to the list with Midnight Hunt, still there for Neon Dynasty. It is a big legacy card. You're going to see this in 8-cast, Sneak and Show, Painter, and more. Vintage, it's in aggro as well as prison shops and goblins. It is a big commander mana base card too. Expensive, but a nice upgrade to buckle up. Or something, again, to put in a fresh build around Shorikai. This is also in other new builds like Hinata, for example. And this was in that Prosh deck on Extra Turns this week too. Mox Opal for Modern Masters 2015. This goes up 528 this week to 7299. This card gets a lot of play. Legacy, it's an 8 cast painter, the Epic Storm, and more. In Vintage, it's in Paradoxical Outcome, 8 cast there too, sometimes aggro shops. It is another expensive but good upgrade to the Buckle Up Commander deck if you're a commander player. Also, something I see in fresh builds around Shorikai from there. And it's in other new commander decks too, like Tamishi Reality Architect. And on top of that, this got a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week too. Serenity Now. This time the 6th edition copy goes up 572 this week to 1323. So this is in some legacy sideboards to bring in against Urza Saga or problematic artifacts and enchantments in general. Typically you see this in Reanimator, sometimes Death and Taxes. This also gets a tad bit of commander play too. Again, we have an original copy of a card from the dark that people are after. It is Maze of Ith. This is up 618 this week to $46. So you'll find this one in Legacy Lands, Naya Depths, Four Color Loam, and it has seen some increased commander play recently too in some mission builds. Bayou from Revised, this one is up 685 this week to 526.12. 
This was also in that Prosh deck from Extra Turns this week. However, this card's pretty expensive. I don't know if that would be driving any sales. Intuition from Tempest up 10-10 this week to 199.50. This is in Legacy Sneak and Show and High Tide. As for Commander, this has seen increased play in that format in Tamishi as well as Hinata. The first of many unlimited cards in this section today. This is Cockatrice up 11.99 to 54.99. Aspect of Wolf from Unlimited up 12.21 to 29.95. Scrubland from Revised up 13.43 to 371.99. Pirate Ship from Unlimited. Now, the rest of the white border cards in this section are going to be from that set, so I won't keep saying it. Just know if you see a white bordered card for the rest of this section, it is from Unlimited. This one goes up $13.99 to $44.98. Power Surge up $14.21 to $68.21. Wrath of God up $15.40 to $142. Armageddon up $34.28 to $185.82. Demonic Hordes up $36.13 to $163. Mahamadi Jin up $39.73 to $131.66. Tetsu Umezawa, this is up $40.09 this week to $258.24. Brain Geyser up $40.38 to $295.48. Birds of Paradise up $41.16 to $360.74. Argothian Enchantress, Eternal Masters up $13.76 to $73.99. The Urza Saga copy though up $53.20 to $119.99. Okay, so this is in Legacy Enchantress. And this is a good commander card in those enchantment heavy decks like Sithis Harvest Hand. Those decks have been seeing more play because of the enchantment focus in Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. This is also in new builds around cards from that set. Go Shintai of Life's Origin, Tatsunari, Setsuki the Living Lore. And it is a good upgrade to Upgrades Unleashed. Plus, I've seen this in fresh builds around a card from there, Kaima the Fractured Calm. Now, I think there's one of two things happening with the price of this card. Granted, there's been a lot of people trying to pick this up over the last couple months. Maybe it just reached a breaking point where finally there just weren't a lot of copies left in the marketplace. And those more expensive copies are just all that's out there right now. Or because this has been hot for a little while now, somebody may have finally decided to pull the trigger and buy out any reasonable copies that were out there. We'll have to see what happens in the next couple weeks. If this did dry out naturally, I do think you're going to see some retraction because these are some pretty big spikes but the card will stay relatively high until it gets reprinted again. Now, if it was a targeted buyout, then I would expect the price to go back down to at least close to where it was last week over the next few weeks. Lord of the Pit goes up 59.66 to 101.13. A lot of people are looking for the cheaper cards from Unlimited this week, I think, maybe just buying up a lot of them, leaving the more expensive ones in the marketplace. They might hang on to them for a while, or they might sell them back quickly. Gaia's Cradle from Urza Saga up $60.60 to $1,098, and this is in Legacy Elves as well as Maverick. In Vintage, you'll see this in Squee Hollow Vine, and it is a great commander card if you're lucky enough to have one. This is in a lot of builds, including Lathril Blade of the Elves, and additionally, this was in that Prosh deck on extra turns this week. Again, I don't really think that's pushing the price point, considering how expensive this card is. Fungusaur back again up $74.43 to $188.24. So is this for real? Well, the price is inflated. If you look at raw copies that are being sold right now, they go for about $38 in high grade. I, however, have not seen any high grade graded copies sell for quite some time. Maybe one could get around this price point, perhaps. Navinerals Disc, this is up $91 to $357.44. Now, high grade raw copies sell for just a little bit less than this price, but high grade graded copies can go for more. I have not seen one sell for a while, though. Mishra's Factory. Now, this is the Antiquities Fall variation you see on the screen. In theory, going up 191.70 to 599.98. Is that for real? Well, there is some inflation here. High grade raws can sell for about $205 or so. I have not seen a high grade graded copy sell for a while. It would have to be in pretty high grade, though, to get close to the price on the screen. Jazam Jin is our last card in this section today, and it is going up $1,240 to $5,499.99. Is that for real? Well, here's the story. High-grade raws can hit about 3350 or so, typically. High-grade graded copies, of course, can go for a lot more than that. Now, there have not been a lot of those selling recently, but not too long ago, there was one that sold for $7,800, but that was a 10. Obviously, those are extremely rare, but ever since that happened, sellers have been increasing the asking prices. Now, granted, they might be fishing for an offer. I'm sure they would take a fair offer in most cases, but those increases lead to what you're seeing on the screen here. And that takes us to the Commander Spotlight. Now, all the cards in this section are moving, at least in part because of Commander. 
In some cases, there could be other reasons, and I will point those out as we go through. Mycosynth Lattice, the one from Darksteel, up $2 to $42.83. This is in a number of commander builds, including Oscar the Reconstructor. In Legacy, though, you'll see this in Azorius Bomberman, Urza Echo, sometimes Painter. Vintage, it's in Paradoxical Outcome and Prison Shops. Additionally, it was in one of those decks on Extra Turns this week, too. This time, the deck was Alibu Ancient Witness. Mana Vault from Revised. Now, this was also on Extra Turns. It was in that Prosh build. This copy goes up $2 to 7402 It is getting more commander play now, too. It is expensive, but a good upgrade to the Buckle Up commander deck. Also in fresh builds around Shorikai again. Vintage, you'll see this in Paradoxical Outcome, as well as Aggro in Prison Shops. And on top of everything else, it was also mentioned in another episode of the Command Zone podcast this week, too. Bronze Guardian. This is up 201 this week to 449, and it is getting more commander play, as you can imagine. Another good upgrade to buckle up. And this is in a couple fresh builds around cards from that deck. Shorikai, as well as Kotori Pilot Prodigy. On top of that, I've seen this in another new build, too. Grease Fang Okiba Boss. Lion's Eye Diamond. This is up 210 this week to 552.09. Again, small percentage increase, but it is worthwhile pointing out because we haven't seen this card on the market watch for a while. It is getting increased commander play now in some Tamishi builds. In Legacy, though, you're going to see this in Ad Nauseam Tendrils, Doomsday, Painter, The Epic Storm, Lion's Eye Diamond Dredge, Azorius Bomberman, and more. Cyclonic Rift, the copy from Commander 2014, goes up 221 this week to 3911. Huge commander card, another one found in Yuriko as well. Also, another good upgrade to Buckle Up, and it's in fresh builds around Shorika, I imagine that. Plus, it's in some other new builds too, like Satoru and Hinata. Fury up 225 this week to 2668. Sees a little commander playing different builds, including Torbrand, Thane of Red Fell. It is getting more modern play, however, though, in this post Luris meta. You're going to find it in Murktide Regent there, Crashing Footfalls, Four Color Blink, Elementals, and much more. Legacy, it's in Blood Moon Aggro. Vintage, it's in Squee Hollow Vine and Goblins. Cabal Coffers from Torment. This is up 241 this week to 2754. Popular commander card in a lot of builds, including a newer one, Satoru. The reason this is moving this much now, though, ties into those Streets of Nuka Pena teases from Mark Rosewater. He said that there was going to be a card that cost 2 black and 13. If it turns out to be good, this is a way that you could cast it relatively quickly. Ancestral Knowledge of 243 to 1899. Now, we've been saying this for a few weeks now, but a number of cheaper reserve list cards have been hot. This one does get a little commander play. But at this point, because of the continuous climb, it does feel more like a targeted reserveless buyout than anything. Another Shockland Hallowed Fountain, the original one from Dissension up 246 to 2728. Smothering Tithe. This is up 248 to 4706. Huge commander card in a lot of builds. It is a good upgrade to buckle up. Surprise, surprise. Also good in fresh Shorikai builds. Plus, it is in a number of other new commander decks around Neon Dynasty cards. Goshin Tai of Life's Origin, Ishin, Hinata. And it got a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week. Plus, it showed up in that Ali Boo deck in the Extra Turns episode as well. Temporal Manipulation from Portal Second Age. It is up 251 this week to 5737. And this copy is hard to find in good condition online, which is why this price is a little inflated. And if you want another copy of the card, you can get it cheaper. As a matter of fact, this was printed recently in the list. It was there for Zendikar Rising in Cal time. Now, when it comes to commander gameplay, yeah, sometimes you see this in Yuriko builds, for example. It's also in some new builds like Tamishi and Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant. Exorcist is up 264 this week to 4978. This doesn't see much commander play currently. I think this is another one that's moving more because of its status on the reserve list than anything. Could be the start of a buyout. Boseju Who Shelters All from Champions of Kamigawa. This goes up 266 this week to 4296. This is in a number of commander builds, including Carrick Son of Yogmoth. In Legacy, you'll see this in Omnitel, sometimes in Sneak and Show too. Minamo School at Water's Edge. This is another Champions of Kamigawa card up 284 this week to $28. And this is seeing increased commander play, and you guessed it, it's another good upgrade to buckle up. Also in fresh builds around Shorikai and Kotori. Plus, it's in other new builds too, like Jenga Taxius Progress Tyrant and Satoru. In modern, you see this in Merfolk. Mystic Gate. The Double Masters copy is up 299 to 3299. Solid commander lands here, and you guessed it. You could put this in the Buckle Up Commander deck if you want to, or in a fresh build around Shori Kai. Plus, it's in other new Commander decks too, Hinata and Tamishi, for example. In Modern, you'll see this in Azorius as well as Bant Control. Sometimes it's in Jeskai Control too. 
Land tax, the copy from the list, it goes up 321 this week to 3886. Now this was on the list from Zendikar Rising through Modern Horizons 2. It is a solid commander card. Many times you'll see this one in Sithis decks, and it is getting more play now and builds around some Neon Dynasty cards. Light Paws Emperor's Voice, Ishin, and Tamishi. Plus, yeah, you know where this could go? In that Buckle Up Commander deck, or in a fresh build around Shorikai. Kalia of the Vast. Now, last week, a couple of these were going up. I thought this card had more room to grow. We'll talk about why in a second. Check it out this week. Commander Anthology. Only comes in foil, that particular copy. It's up 279 to 2995. Commander goes up 322 to 3449. Double Master is up 371 to 3199. Okay, very popular Commander, as you know. I've also seen this on occasion in the 99 of the Ur Dragon builds. However, the reason it's moving the way it is right now ties into both Streets of New Capenna and Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. In Streets of New Capenna, we know we're going to see demons. They're running the crime families. We saw one earlier in the video. We're going to see two more in just a second. Also, we now know angels are going to be in the set too to some degree. For example, Mark Rosewater did tell us that there would be an artifact creature angel warrior in there, for example. Now beyond that, Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate is going to have dragons in it. We did see one dragon preview already. I'm going to show you that in just a second. But the other thing I wanted to point out was that that set is also going to have commander decks, and one of those decks is called Draconic Descent. Now, it is an Izzet deck, so this won't be an upgrade, or you won't be able to put all the cards from there into a Kali of the Vast deck. But still, it's a good indication of what's to come. Let's go ahead and look at these preview cards I've been teasing. We did see one demon earlier, of course. Here's the other two that I mentioned. Lord Xander the Collector and Rafine Scheming Seer. Now remember, again, these demons, as well as the one we saw earlier, do not share color identity with Kali of the Vast. So if you do play them together in Commander, you're going to need a different five-color Commander, but hey, there could be a good card coming in one of these two sets, who knows? Now that third card, like I was saying, not from New Capenna, this one's from Commander Legends, but it tells us dragons are going to be playing a role, and this one does share color identity with Kali of the Vast. Now regardless of the preview cards themselves, we are going to be seeing a lot more cards from these two sets, Perhaps we'll see some cards that are even more compatible with Kalia. On top of all this, Kalia the Vast also got a Command Zone podcast mentioned this week. Didgeridoo, up 372 to 2971, everybody's favorite Homelands Reserve list card. So this one does get some commander play, sometimes in like Sethron Hurloon General decks. Occasionally, there's a Minotaur deck playing this card that shows up in Legacy. Every once in a while, it does well and people start paying attention to it again. But I think the reason this is moving the way it is now ties into Battle for Baldur's Gate. I think there's some speculation that we could see some decent Minotaurs in that set. The Suvin Doppelganger from Revised of 446 to 3999. Now this does get a little commander play in various builds, but it is another reserve list card, so maybe this is the start of a buyout. Something to keep an eye on. Survival of the Fittest from Exodus of 475 to 259.99. Now, this one is found in a number of Commander builds, including Sithis. Teferi's Protection from Commander 2017. This goes up $5.01 to forty three forty four. Highly played Commander card. And again, people need this for some new builds. It's a good upgrade to buckle up. It's in fresh builds around Shorikai. Also, you'll see this in Goshintai of Life's Origin, Ishin, Light Paws, and Hinata. This one is an older card that's yet to be reprinted. Not on the reserve list, though. It is Reconnaissance. It goes up 533 this week to 2508. And this is another card getting more Commander play in some mission builds. Attracts a Praetor's Voice from Commander Anthology Volume 2. This particular copy only comes in foil. It goes up 623 this week to 4347. And here's another card that could play well with Broker's Ascendancy or Minsk and Boo, Timeless Heroes. Again, Minsk and Boo have red in their color identity, so they can't be in an Attracts a Commander deck. But the two of them could still play together in tandem in a five color build. Now, when it comes to Attraxa right now, this is a very popular Commander. It's in the 99 of some builds too, including Sisei Weatherlight Captain Shrine decks. Those have been popular ever since the new shrines came out in Neon Dynasty. One note about this card though, there was some new art for Atraxa found in Magic Arena, so there is a chance that there is a reprint coming, perhaps in a secret layer. Some people this week didn't think they'd get a second chance at this one. Second chance is up $20.69 to $29.99. Okay, recently there was a Commander's Quarters video talking about commanders with powerful one-card combos. The two cards that were mentioned that combo with this are Goshintai of Life's Origin and Hannah Ship's Navigator. Now, you could think of some others, I'm sure, but I think it's Goshintai of Life's Origin that's really pushing this price. A lot of players were playing that deck already because it just came out in the newest set. 
and they may have seen the video, decided, you know what, I want a copy of Second Chance. It is a reserve list card, it's very old, hard to find in good condition, so it doesn't take much to move the price. Now, perhaps once the card started to move up, or maybe when somebody saw it in that video, they decided they wanted to go ahead and spec on it, that's possible. But I think at the very least, this started off as a natural increase. And finally for the section, we have Sliver Queen. This is up $27.85 to $359, and this is the Sliver Lord that's on the reserve list. It has been losing some value for a while, but this week it does take a big jump back up. Sometimes this is a commander for a Sliver build, but for the most part, you usually see it in the 99 around a commander like Sliver Overlord, for example. Basically, this is your Whitman sampler of premium cards. Welcome to the premium spotlight. Okay, so I only pick a few cards every week to talk about in this section. This week I did choose three. Now there's so much movement all the time in the premium market, it's just impossible to keep up with. And a lot of that movement is very temporary because you don't see a lot of sales for many of these cards in any given week. So I try to pick cards for this section that are moving organically, that just feel like they're not being targeted for a buyout or they're not going to go up one week back down the next week. And much like the vintage section, the prices you see on the screen are going to be very reminiscent of what you might see on a price tracking website. Again, though, if those prices aren't matching with what I'm seeing when it comes to true sales, I'll let you know. This shows up for the second time in our video, Second Chance, but this time it is the Urza's Legacy foil copy. It goes up 49.13 this week to 242.23. Is that for real? Well, I have seen high-grade raw copies break $200, so this price is not very far off. Sellers might be putting it up a little bit to stay ahead of the spike, and then they might go ahead and accept a fair offer. Now, I have not seen any high-grade graded copies of this if one were to sell. Sure, it could go for far more than this. Our last two cards today are Judge Promo Foils. The first one is Survival of the Fittest. It goes up $65.50 to $1,834.50. Is that one real? Well, high-grade raw copies can get close to $1,500. Sellers might be increasing the price looking to fish for offers. I have not seen any high-grade graded copies of this sell either, but if one were to sell, it could go for a lot more than this price. And finally, Gaia's Cradle, the Judge Foil, it is up $124.98 to $2,624.48. Believe it or not, I have seen high-grade raw copies sell for slightly more than this price. Again, you don't see many high-grade graded copies of this card either. If you ever did and it did sell, yeah, it would sell for quite a bit. All right, with that being said, that does it for this episode of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. If you stuck with me to the end, thanks for being here. I always appreciate that. Until next time, stay safe out there. Hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page, as well as our Amazon affiliate store, where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.